Every year a new iPhone comes out, I get asked by numerous people if it's worth to upgrade for the new and improved camera. And to be honest, sometimes it's hard to spot the differences across multiple iPhone generations. So today we'll answer the question whether you actually really need the latest and greatest iPhone to capture great footage. What up guys, my name is Eddie Bear and welcome to another episode. We all know that every year there is a new iPhone and the question every year is the same. Do I need to or should I upgrade to the newest model? Depending on your photographic needs, the answer to that question isn't necessarily yes. Especially if you consider that the new 15 Pro by now starts at 1200 euros, where you just might as well just get a used 14 Pro for around 950 euros. So it's quite valid to consider older iPhone generations if you don't want to carve out 1200 euros for the latest model. And let's face it, you won't go with the base 128 gig model because you don't want to run out of space all the time. Therefore, 512 gig is the way to go, even more so if you like to record lots of videos. Since I don't want to overcomplicate things, this is not a scientific comparison. I will not go into the technical differences of the individual cameras. This is for the everyday user who likes to capture good quality images and wants to know what they get for their buck. Therefore, I will show you footage that is captured during Oktoberfest last year with the iPhone Pro lineup. More specifically, the iPhone 13, 14 and 15 Pro. I'll compare their capabilities mainly in low light conditions across their lenses and since I know there will be plenty of Android users who just wait to flood the comment section about how superior Android is in their opinion, um, please respect that this video is for people living in the Apple ecosystem and the differences between Apple and Android are a whole different topic and I'm not touching Pandora's box. So let's begin by comparing the iPhone cameras at different zoom levels. Traditionally, the ultra-wide camera of the iPhone delivers the weakest low-light performance of the bunch. However, the footage you can capture with it is still far from being bad and you can clearly see an improvement in low-light performance in the treetop on the left. The iPhone 13 Pro lost a lot of detail while the 15 Pro on the right was able to capture more due to its higher dynamic range. The One X or main camera is the one you want to capture most of your footage with whenever possible. It is the camera with the highest amount of megapixels, therefore you can crop into your crisp footage way further before your image becomes pixelated and therefore is ideal if you want to get any of those photos printed later. This camera also has the widest dynamic range of the bunch and therefore you won't lose as much details in the shadows or highlights. When it comes to the 2x zoom, all three iPhones are using the 1x camera lens which is good because you still retain the low light qualities of that lens. However, they are cropping the sensor in in order to achieve this zoom. So you are losing some of those precious megapixels. The only exception is the iPhone 13 Pro. This one didn't have the ability to crop the sensor and therefore it's digitally zooming into the footage. And that's why the recording has way more noise than the ones from the 14 and 15 Pro. The the 3X is the third dedicated lens on all of the Pro iPhones and it used to be very bad at low light compared to the 1X lens. However, you can see that in terms of noise and dynamic range, there is a huge improvement from the iPhone 13 to the 15 Pro. The 15 Pro 3X lens also comes with built-in optical image stabilization, but more about that later. In the zoom level comparison, you were already able to see a few differences in image quality, but some differences are more obvious than others. So let's pixel peep in order to find the not so obvious differences. This here is our reference photo taken with the 0.5x zoom lens. And at a first glance, you barely can see any differences. If you zoom in 400%, some details become more obvious. For example, the light bleed. If you take a look at the iPhone 13 Pro photo, you can see that the white spikes definitely bleed into the dark sky. If you look at the iPhone 14 and 15 Pro, that is not so prominent anymore and there is a way bigger contrast between the dark sky and the white spikes. Same goes for the white lights in the middle of the pictures. If you look at the iPhone 15 Pro, it is able to render the dark spots between the individual light bulbs, whereas the 13 and 14 Pro almost make it look like it's made out of one solid light. And if you look between the legs of the ferris wheel, you can see that at the sky area, the iPhone 13 Pro has way more grain than the 14 and 15 does. 
And talking about grain, this gets even more obvious if you look at the more contrasty or darker parts of the photo. This makes it very clear that the newer the iPhone gets, the better it is when it comes to dim or mixed light scenarios. So the next time you want to take a photo of your food in a restaurant, just ask yourself how much grain is acceptable on your food. Same goes for this photo taken with the 3x lens. Especially when it comes to the color rendering, there is almost no difference between the 14 and 15 Pro photo. However, the moment you zoom in 400%, the results take a sharp turn. So for example, the iPhone 13 Pro 3x sensor does not have image stabilization. So that's why the image is blurry. The iPhone 14 Pro on the other hand already has the first gen image stabilization and that's why it's more crispy than the 13 Pro, however, it is still not as sharp as the 15 Pro with the second generation image stabilization. And since the photo of the 15 Pro is so much sharper, just look how much more details you can find on the statue's arm, or you can even see the individual hair strains of the lion's head. So these results translate pretty much to the next time you want to record someone on a stage or you go to a zoo in order to record some animals. And these results become even more so clear if you compare the 3x camera video results. We are not even zoomed in yet and you can see a huge difference in terms of grain and also the stability of the image. Zoomed in the results become even more so abundantly clear. However, what I don't like about the 15 Pro is even though it has no grain within the imagery, it introduces a lot of artifacts which I kinda don't like, so I would almost prefer the imagery from the 14 Pro, but that's up to personal preference. By this time you probably already noticed that the video footage from the iPhone 15 Pro is pretty much rock solid, even though I didn't add any image stabilization posts. So let me show you what happens if you glue three iPhones together and run like a crazy person. And to be abundantly clear, I was not even trying to hold the phone steady at all. And even though I'm running fast and there is no stable constant within the image that you can focus on, you can still notice the things I mentioned before, for example the contrastiness. The 13 Pro has a lot of light bleed, whereas the 15 Pro is almost able to render every now and then a dark sky. And by the way, if you're wondering why I chose to show you results from mixed lit environments, the simple reason is that in well lit environments, the results are pretty much identical. The differences are slim to none, even fully zoomed in, there is barely any difference between the footage. So where does that leave us and what do these results mean for you? If you barely ever take photos and videos or you simply don't care for their overall quality, by all means don't waste your money on the 14 or 15 Pro. However, if you're a starting content creator or simply take joy and pride in being able to capture beautiful imagery, the 14 Pro is a must. Honestly, I had the 14 Pro with me while I was traveling through Costa Rica and Peru and it took such good photos that there barely ever was a need for me to fall back to my Canon EOS R5. But if you do have the budget and you want to have the latest and greatest, the iPhone 15 Pro will without a doubt reward you with the best possible photos and videos. So what is your opinion? Which iPhone would you opt for and will you be upgrading anytime soon? Let me know in the comments. And with that said, check out my tutorials on how to shoot cinematic videos with the help of your smartphone. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.